Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for this invitation speaking here. In these two days, I learned a lot about the e justice system in Brazil, and I'm uh, very impressed about the developments. Uh, I'm speaking here about uh, the Austrian and Central European examples, uh, mostly Austrian examples, but also some examples from Germany or Czech Republic or Slovak Republic. So mostly Central European experiences uh, in the European context. Uh, so first of all, we should think about your e justice. Uh, that's uh, the Brazilian federal problem. We have uh, 500 million, 24 languages, 28 states, uh, real sovereign states. So it makes cooperation between the various members, European Union members, very difficult. Then I will speak about the, the technological solution of Austria. What we're doing? Can we see it? How many applications we're running? It's not only a process system, an e-filing system, and a bit uh, how we consider what's proper automation. That's called in European dynamic forms and intelligent forms, but very intelligent, but still uh, something. Uh, Useful, remarkable. Yeah, when you can't ask the Austrian Ministry of Justice that is responsible for uh, justice, it's not the courts, the ministry is, uh, has responsibility. And uh, say we are one of the best countries, that's a different discussion, developing for a while maybe. Earlier, Finland was very good. Nowadays, you see that many countries are also developing very interesting solutions. In uh, Europe, uh, the countries are now strongly guided by the European Union. The European Union has no competence, no strong say, but it can coordinate, motivate, facilitate. And it's the European way to have the working groups in the Council of Representatives of the various member states. And they develop solutions that's then financed by the European Union or by some member state. And very often it ends in some policy or also legal instrument. And you shouldn't forget that in Europe we don't we have to also to harmonize the various legal the law as such, the procedural law, because the instruments are very different and it's basically still starts international law cooperation. That's not sufficient for them. Highly integrated into the market. So there's a lot of legal work also to be done and then later implemented by technological solutions. Then we speak a lot of effective justice systems and uh, the guiding principle is now in our fundamental charter of fundamental rights of the European Union, Article 47, speaks about effective access to justice. And that's developing, there's not much case law yet but it will continue, so I expect quite a lot of that. The definitions on e-justice are not very strong, I must say. Mostly, we say it's uh, use of IT to improve uh, the access to justice for citizens, and they concentrate, they mention criminal law and civil law, but it's mostly civil law at the moment, not much in criminal law. And, uh, we say it started for a long time, there was not much going on, but there was a conference in Vienna in 2006, and they said it should do something. And uh, then it started to establish a working group in the Council of the European Union, the main body of cooperation in the member states. And they exchanged views, and later asked the Commission to develop something. And the uh, Commission has done that communication, that's some kind of working paper, what we can do. And then later the Council, the Ministers, all Ministers of the United States, made two uh, plans, one action plan and one roadmap, what to do. And the main framework is nowadays the European Justice Portal, where uh, the citizens can see how they can get justice in Europe in particular, also in other member states. That's quite difficult, I must say. Many languages. 
but the AIM would be that if you have a problem, you can go to the website and get information and for some, some support how to make some claims in another member state. You see with the website. Yeah, here's the English one here the Portuguese, so I can have a look. If you have like the slides, so you can have it if also a paper version of about 20 pages, I can send it if you like it. So, so you see what they do. Something you don't need to do here, terminology work, see. Uh, it's kind of uh, glossary, semantic tables, then best practices, that's always very common in, uh, in Europe. Then legal aid and the strong is also video conferencing. I think here, here, so we get witness evidence from someone in another member state. That's uh, so strong encouraged. Then the special focus uh, topics. And this mostly concentrating on small claims, so low value of the dispute, and the other is the payment order. So we have already a judgment. But we'd like to execute it for payment in another member state. Then, what's also quite strong in Europe is um, the registers. A lot of information is required from other member states. So, we have to get access to the various registers and they have some networks land register, business register, then following the criminal records, so, and also the bills. Insolvency and also integrators, uh, translators, or something quite important in our case. So it's uh, um, access to law, it's a part, it's also considered as part of the justice, maybe also here. So they develop databases and make it easy accessible. And one project also from Bologna and Florence is this European case law identifier. So it's uh, a XML structure for each case to be easily identified. We made it large to uh, <coughs> uh, legislation. When you see this kind of operation that's uh, mostly working groups, they meet four times a year. The Austrian representative is uh, Martin Schneider. And then, if you do some practical work, we got some money. The main project is now at the moment eCodex, e justice communication via online data exchange. They have 24 million euros and they spend it until February next year. And they have pilots. So, four pilots will do real art interchange of data, interoperability in certain areas, and that's always only payment order, small claims, then data exchange, and arrest warrant and financial penalties, but mostly concentrated normal small claims and payment order. So we're a very limited area. We have real developing online communication. So in that sense, we say uh, Brazil is much more advanced, yet much more. So interoperability in Europe, beyond the borders of a member state, is still uh, not yet well developed. We struggle in a member state, I must say. You see, it's just this from the awesome experience. Uh, the ministry was always very pragmatic. So, only solutions that were good to do, established practice, were developed and implemented. The judges had some say, but not a very strong one. Because most of the ministry decided what to do, what to follow next. And it was, I would say, it's a uh, software course, um, as a service approach. But it was mostly that was done and followed by the Austrian Minister of Justice. So, you see in the cloud, you provide services in this cloud on a strong network. Formula by again, now I have servers, PCs, and all this. If you save money, you see it, uh, the system costs a lot, a little bit later, you may save some money because you don't need too many people. But it mostly goes to improvement of services. And when you see a savings at the moment, you find it ridiculous. But it comes to delivery of papers that cost a lot in Europe, because of here. And if the electronic delivery, they save a lot. So it's about 20 cents electronic delivery. And they have 5 euros to pay for delivery. 
So otherwise, uh, you need other people, IT people. So cost savings are low. So far. You see it, cloud computing. I mentioned it also because it's an e-justice system nowadays. You're integrated into society. You have to take into care what uh, the society is interested in communication tools, in uh, uh, tools for writing, reading, analyzing papers. And I've seen here what you're doing for social media is much more than we see in Europe. But that's quite important because uh, you have to be more integrated in society. And justice is one way of that. Also justifying the costs. Yeah, the, it's interesting also that uh, the Austrian Ministry says we are a company, an enterprise, and uh, we're running it. And but they're also very proud that 70 percent of that of expenditure is uh, covered by revenues, so by fees uh, for the various services, including also the prison services. So you see, it's uh, the justice system has to finance itself. That's the main principle. So you see from the, from the numbers, we have 2,000 judges, so that's quite a lot. We have all together 1,000 employees, so much more than maybe Brazil. Comparison to the numbers, we are 25 times smaller when it comes to population, and the case is 3.1 million, so quite a lot, but there were quite many minor cases, so firms may have several of them, normal people. Maybe not that much, but anyone maybe. Uh, so in the output numbers, what so we have to deliver, we say from 15.4 million deliveries, paper and in electronic deliveries, so it's quite a lot. You see also the communication aspect, that's strong, and that was the main focus for a very long time. So from the solution, what is the cloud solution? First, we have this kind of uh, mainframes, with, uh, terminals, that we see. Nowadays, we are quite flexible, including also mobile phones, handhelds, all kind of technology. Then they use uh, standard technology and have a network that's not the justice network, it's one of the whole Austrian state, federal state, it's called the Corporate Network Austria. So it's linking not only the, the, the justice. Courts, but also the administrations, so the administration of the federal provinces, and also communities can be part of that. So you see the numbers, um, it's quite a lot uh, altogether. I wouldn't repeat that. And uh, we have a provider that's uh, established by law, it's the Federal Data Processing Center. They've always done it from the very beginning, and they are the legal provider of this kind of services. So they didn't have this kind of uh, public procurement approach that may have been possible. And uh, it works quite well, but it's also expensive. When it comes to normal software, they rely heavily on standard software, standard PCs. It was here. They consider Linux, but not yet. When it comes to office solutions, they have open office, not uh, the Microsoft solution that causes some problems. Some judges don't like that. The others are developed by the ministry and by the Bundesrechenzentrum, where they provide themselves. So the Ministry of Justice decides on the requirements and then they do the programming. And they have a strong provider, it's IBM. If they have a solution, they very often take us on IBM solution, particularly when it comes to databases. So you don't develop it. It's mostly procedures you do on your own. Then this platform, they use websites, and you do next to a website. It works also quite well. You see with the website, it's in German, so it's not much use. From the history, we start with databases. We had the uh, big books on land register, commercial registers, and they were moved to uh, databases. Just one small anecdote from uh, Austria Germany. The Austrians were 
decryption data. Uh, Strong saying we use a database, just a normal commercial database, and uh, with all the problems of easy changing data, that was a quite strong move from paper where every change could be easily recognized. The journals didn't do that, they still relied on uh, data basis uh, areas that, uh, were, that you could see changes. But in the very end, the cost solution is much better because it's much more efficient as a cloud solution. Then we had started quite early also with electronic communications in 1990. For certain procedures and then for the whole of procedures, it was mostly some kind of a post box solution. So we had the various advocates in the uh, data box where you got messages, information data, and you can upload information data there. We start with three XML solutions, which is also quite easy to do, and then we move later to XML solutions. Then it also some big designs, so we see there's the IBM, the mainframe world, and the next, the PC world, the server world, and now we have the next three design going on from now until the next three years. So we so then adjust this 2020. Maybe you don't know, it's 2020 is a magic figure in Europe. Everything should be designed in the future, and that's Europe 2020, and everything is in 2020. It's just so like that. Then they got rewards for uh, certain solutions, in particular for payment orders and communications. Infrastructure mentions that Sony makes some kind of a. Then did one comment also the justice system doesn't communicate directly with its client, with advocates. They have uh, providers, they do communication, and they also have to develop their own software because the solution is quite complicated. For instance, give an example, the justice system is not willing to give information that something is in your box. You have to look at it every day, every hour. The software provides this kind of service. So all together, this kind of providers, this is the software, the Bundesrecht Zentrum, the Federal Processing Center, they provided any quite sophisticated and good working solutions. And also when it comes to identification, it was not signatures, it was some kind of uh, account, so you can use account, that's a solution. Now when we move on, because nowadays uh, there's a lot of electronic communication going on. There's also some kind of an electronic file, but not a very nice one. So, yeah, it's the next step to make a nice file that the judge says that's nice, I like to read, to work, and also to send maybe later when it's finished the whole file to the appellate court for reconsideration. And a lot is also what you see in the media conference. It's also a small country, but still uh, taking evidence. You have to, uh, witnesses have to take very often several hours, and if you can go to the next court, we Evidence there is uh, much cheaper than there's some kind of speech recognition. It's also important in practice because lawyers are not able to type. And if you go to speech recognition system, it may help a lot. But at the moment, uh, the typing is still mostly done by the secretaries. There's some writing services. Otherwise, um, but that will develop. We'll see. Some judges buy, but most of them don't do. And they also have the very proud the delivery of a typical post, it's not even more, so very written documents. It's some kind of a, we call it a uh, Poststraße in German, so it's an uh, epic word. It's just finishing the paper, signing them, and then it's printed centrally in Vienna and posted centrally in Vienna for all Austria. So it, no court has to do anything with kind of posting letters anymore. It was quite efficient, it saved a lot of time in, for uh, secretaries or stuff. Very good stuff. Then the legal framework, I will not summarize, you need a lot to do to change the procedural law, why and so, to make it accessible, uh, electronic documents, what is an identity. Uh, then how I can do payment orders and so on. What we also have, I just mentioned it a bit. Uh, liability, that's also a big question. 
what this winning system says. The Austrians have decided for a strict liability system. So if something goes wrong, the each of the system has to prove that uh, the failures of the side of the client. And if it's uh, the failure of the system, we take liability. The main case that happened so far was when the printout of the land register is wrong. So it's, it's a wrong owner of the land. It could be huge liability immediately, easily. And in that case, the Austrian system will take responsibility and liability. So only proof that they have this kind of document and uh, the damage is there. Then it comes to uh, identification and authority. The citizens as such, uh, it's interesting, they have, have a citizen card. That's some kind of an electronic uh, identity card. You get the number and you get also the uh, electronic signature. The Austrian signed by a card system, but also with the mobile signature solution. It's uh, quite special. So you can uh, sign using your mobile phone, you get some kind of an SMS with a special number, identifying yourself as the owner of the mobile phone at the time. It's, it's a complicated but it's not. So you can do it also as a citizen, just go to the website and file a claim. Um, see a bit uh, more details, I will not uh, speak too much about it. Just to see, it's uh, with many, many applications, and you need a special application for each kind of service you're doing. Then, maybe the most important is also the documents. You see the official documents you need for transfer of land. Yeah, or for business transactions, nomination of uh, uh, board board members in a stock company, and so on. Here we have a system together with the notaries and also the solicitors. Uh, there must be signed electronically, and they can store it in central archives. The notaries have one, the strongest one, and the solicitors, but also the justice system, the justice system. And then you refer only time to these documents when you do some kind of application, for instance, transfer of land, say the document is there, so you have to deliver, and it's considered as uh, original, if not proof contrary. That's also quite good, so you don't have this kind of paperwork when it comes to documents. The rest I only mentioned it's mostly the typical one, you do small claims, execution, executions for money, payment orders. Then you have done kind of this uh, communications, then the fees, you must have a solution because normally we still have stamps. So you have to put it on paper, you have to buy it first and put it on paper there. If you have the same system, now you have it from your account. So it's, it's kind of uh, small problems that have to be solved. Then, for instance, one solution that's also really interesting for integration. Uh, since several years, the public users are fully responsible for all kind of uh, uh, police work. They have to decide if it's the kind of system to be followed, who is for investigation or not. And they have integrated systems the police, uh, uh, collect data, sets up a file, and this file is then sent to the public prosecutors. And in most cases, they only say nothing to do, have no data, not enough evidence available, and close the case. That help a lot because of it. it's not it's hundreds of other cases that will be done there. So the rest is uh, yeah, a lot of databases, you know, to say interpreters, uh, then uh, expert witnesses, all this is quite useful to be do. Then the communication I mentioned already, that's uh, working quite well in this kind of postbook system. And also edit, it's, uh, it's a small part of it. So we have to see when there's a, an, an insolvency file, real property options, as we put some of the black of the court, how to do it in one website. And uh, all together, they're very satisfied with that because of the sales, you see the revenues of the very sales are much higher. Then there's no access to port files, registers, 
control the whole system you can imagine for the core. So it's a lot of this information providing nowadays. The information access is much easier, also European-wide, then the communication is much easier because of the economy. That makes real sense for advocates because they have to get much faster and also easier for the judges because they can send something out say one week and they get a reply from the advocate. Normally it took several days or even weeks to speed up the system. And something that I mentioned here is uh, uh, the quite efficient system of uh, if, uh, it's a controlling efficiency of a judge. How many cases he's doing, how long he's taking for the he's doing for taking decisions, and so on and so on, with quite new figures. And it seems to be a system that other countries are interested, for instance, the Slovak Republic. It seems to be that's good because all judges are lazy. Identification is in Europe still a problem when it comes to cross border transactions. Here not, I guess. So. And you shouldn't forget the time element is very relevant because uh, that objective it in court. You don't check identities that much in court normally. Just the people that are there are considered as the, as the people they are. You don't check identities. And when it comes to the electronic system, you have to do that. So it takes much more time to check the identities. And uh, now we have this new regulation. The, yeah, it does regulation on the recognition of identities European wide. So you have the international providers of the recognized also in other countries. That was not the case so far. From the solution as such, uh, in Austria we have to this kind of we call it a secure signature integration device, not with the smart club, but we use also the mobile phone that was quite it's quite acceptable and quite strongly used. But normally we don't have this kind of e-signature system that's uh, heavily um, strongly used in Germany, or should be strongly used in Germany in the future. We still have an uh, document is signed electronically. We also we don't have this. We still have the user ID and passport system. Then the judges have this kind of the, a special service card with a login. But uh, in general, they don't sign every document, so if you do a judgment and sign it, you just click with the button, and that's it. So it's, uh, the system as such is uh, controlling all kind of actions, and the system security is sufficiently high that you don't need an electronic signature for each document. There's a strong reluctance of judges saying, yes, uh, we're not willing to sign every document, which means 50 documents a day or more or less. So it's clicking with the mouse much easier. That's the also awesome solution for the German that insists on electronic signatures. Then from the output, the judge is not signing the judgment as such, so it's just because the mouse in the middle of the registry, and the registry signs them all the documents electronically, and we have a service function, service function, so it's then done automatically. If the systems that uh, checks are correct, then if the output is then signed, by the server automatically and send to the various parties. So from the DC main of cloud solution, only one system for the whole judiciary in Austria. So interconnection is easy, everybody's connecting with everybody. There's quite strong internal communication. External is a bit different because you have an external user group that was open in 1990. And we still have with the concept of a closed user group where you have to apply to remember. So most of the interface not to raise uh, high level users. For the public, it's a bit more difficult. They have to use the citizen card. So it's much more difficult. And also, they don't communicate directly. They have intermediaries, some small firms that do this kind of service. From the communication, is here they collect it centrally, send it to the various courts. They have then their electronic files or something similar to that. It's still printed out in practice for the judge. It's not for them to read on the screen or it's, no, it's also not possible because we still keep paper files and electronic files. But uh, the 
outcomings as such because now electronically it costs much cheaper and this kind of uh, sending out uh, uh, paid electronic deliveries started about 10 years later than the applications that was much easier but uh, so uh, since 1999 they do that and then 2007 they changed to XML and this uh, various uh, standard technologies before they had a very sophisticated Priority uh, solution. You see again this kind of uh, strong focus, uh, small claims, and all the payment procedure. Here, normally, you don't have much dispute, so mostly the paperwork is to be done, and you have uh, high numbers. So, the small claims normally it's not challenged at all, so you just go to the court tell the story and get a judgment if not contested. And the same for all of the payment procedure. Here the main saving is fast. Not in the normal process, it's only the communication element. Then one so it's also small detail when you know, do executions and money of uh, property. That's a bit difficult nowadays because people have not much property. I mean also in Austria it's usable. Some of the division sets and so so you go for the salaries. And if you don't know my if you don't know the employer, you go to the social security service and they give you the information. So you don't have to collect this kind of information, you just ask for this kind of payment procedure and the rest is done by the city. When it comes to e-file, it was visited by the a group of uh, I don't know, group of Slovakia and they were very impressed with Austria because they hear good news. And then they go into the court and they would like to see the e-file and uh, what they got on the paper files you know, because they still keep paper files for accommodation also for easier reading and handling of this there is an electronic file but it's also an index and the uh, hyperlinks to the files not a very strong one so we have to move to the real electronic file and the strongest developer is now in Germany because it's uh, much bigger. It's only paper, so it's two times twice bigger, not much more. So it's 80 million. And they would like an electronic file as simple as a paper file, same comfort, and uh, also with high security. You don't see it over here. It's called the E2 Verbund, it's an association of uh, deliveries. This is an example of one firm, Sync. They are doing a lot of uh, e-justice services and also doing the programming for a uh, legal informatics specialist, Huff, the non-file system. So you see a bit that they have some kind of index of all the documents available, all communications, and then on the other side you can get access to the document. So it's some kind of divided screen, the one side the index, and the other side the document. Mostly PDF, but also some kind of pictures that are possible. And you consider that the judges get some kind of handhelds, bigger ones, where they do reading. They have instance, similar like a file. We can read it, annotate it, write to it. So we'll see it will develop. That's uh, now quite strongly developed by SYNC, by VM and some others. And will be deployed in the next years. And in about 10 years, the latest it should happen in all Germany. And this what I see is mostly, the Germans are very, the judges are very strong. And you wouldn't accept the electronic file, but that's not very comfortable. But you can't take home, read, analyze, and you do that. And one particularity also, the Germans still insist on electronic signatures, and then they have, but they have state signatures. So you sign them with one signature act, 50 or 100 documents. That's also an as possible. So that's quite a good solution also. And in my case, I just prefer the electronic signatures, but uh, uh, Depends a bit on what you can expect. Semi automatic decision making. Uh, a lot is communication and justice, and very often you have not a dispute. So, in Austrian law, if you have not a dispute, you can take as true what's provided by one, mean, uh, one party, and that makes it much easier. So you get structured data in XML format, sufficient data to make a judgment, 
a summary judgment. So we take the data from the complaint, from the lawsuit, uh, we use it, put it in the judgment, and that's it. And this can easily automate. So an Austrian judge doing payment orders may have about 100, 200 cases a day, and he may check only maybe 5, 10%, and the rest just goes through. If the procedure is correct and sufficiently done, that works quite well. You can do it for small claims, the same for payment orders. And it also speeds up the other side the procedural acts, but not much more. And in the European Commission, they propose dynamic or intelligent forms. They are at the moment PDFs and the printed card. So it's not electronic delivery so far. It's mostly dealing with the language problem. So you have PDFs, highly structured, that you can then print, use also, using the new language, you can print it out, the language of the other code you're sending it. So you can do it in German, and then the print out is for the Italians, the Italian language. It's the same content, because it's sufficiently semantically structured. But that's then still sent in paper, not yet in the electronic form, that will be done by the e-focus project to doing it. And then it should be a procedure European one. So when you compare it to the way of Brazil, yeah, it's a bit uh, very slow moving, say, because the yes, PDFs printouts are not really high standard, less standard, but still a good development because before we had to do the usual procedures, they were very time consuming. So it's mostly also recognition of judgment and all these procedures, highly problematic. And they would like to do more on that. So they have now about eight forms, then it's PDFs, then they move to XML in the future, then they could do it economically. So and they can do also then more automation. Also the problem on the side is filling in these forms is not easy. So you need some kind of training and lawyers uh, sometimes complain that filling in the new payment order forms with so many variables they don't know is too much for them. Before they had only the use of sentences, they didn't know it's text they can do. We created text, but now it is a few very complicated forms. So it's still, uh, okay. But the the code is much easier because this information is presented in the form to write it. But on the other side of the, of the so advocate, so visitor, is to really, con really strongly consider what he fills in the forms because of the narrow there it can cause huge problems. It could cause a bit just mistakes. There's a bit of shifting of the burden to the side of the user. Can happen here also, I don't know. I hope not. And the conclusion is such uh, uh, Central Europe were highly pragmatic. So the first step was all this databases. So the books are gone, we have no databases, with much easier access and much easier deliveries of services being uh, printouts uh, of the land register, business register, what really important is and the uh, each of the system makes money with that because it's efficient so it should be easily done now before it was time consuming. Then with the communications and it also was huge advantage and you know see also the cost savings. If you can move to communications, you can avoid the cost intensive paper delivery. And you can also speed up the system as such. From when it comes to this e-file, that's a real investment to do it properly. I guess uh, what comes out from the German developments, uh, they will do that because then you have firms like IBM, Sing, and the others who have solutions that can easily buy and transform other countries. Don't know if they will do that, but they will say. From the decision making, you can do that, you can automate. But it doesn't mean the system is that intelligent. You say to the user, please provide the information in such a form that I, because the justice system, understand it. So you move the burden of uh, delivery proof to the side of the user. So it's not always very user friendly. You need some educated users. The advantage is to get much faster decisions. Because the court, they have not much to do anymore. Only to check uh, the various. Uh, the list and the checklist, and after that, it's, uh, it's done. So, from the e process, uh, 
we still rely on communication. We don't do much meeting in on the web and the internet as such. So the meeting place is strongly the court. It means the court is not much envisaged in Austria, Germany. The only exception is the witness taking, but they don't, have, they don't accept that you as a witness are somewhere and give evidence by mobile phone, by Skype or something like that. You say you have to go to a court in a secure environment, in a particular room, and there speak the media evidence be taken, and someone must be present of the other court to check if you are the person, if there's nobody there, nobody's influencing you, and so on and so on. In my view, it's a bit uh, too conservative. So as a court system, you may consider including big data, evidence taking in a very informal way, using some kind of social networks, uh, meetings. Uh, with the problem of uh, not so much controlled environment. But uh, that's uh, a real big step after the e-file, say, that you say we communicate as court in a way that people communicate. As far as I said, we're sitting also in the workshop, uh, the dignity of uh, European courts is considered as a very high, very important element. And what's in there is wise, it comes out as wise and appropriate and not that much challenge, and you don't get any details of what's happening there. So maybe we can learn this from Brazil that uh, much more can be done. The court system is more cooperative uh, and less formal as we still have in Europe and also strongly in Austria and Germany. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. And here is some advertising for other conferences if you like in Europe. They are highly welcome. We do yearly conference in Salzburg. It's the November small conference on digital rights. And we are involved in a research project that's respect, where we have a joint event and October in Brussels. It's mostly surveillance, big data, and data protection. But some, some quite different, but also related to this. So, thank you very much. Um,